Uh, good evening, this is Thomas Cantu, Associate Pastor here at Southside Baptist Church. Just want to welcome you to our Wednesday night Bible study. Tonight's title is going to be Compassion. And we're going to be, our main verse is going to be Job chapter 6, verse 14. And as we talk about compassion, you know, we're just kind of following up. We've, this is our third week looking at Job and situation that he was facing. And last week we talked about the words, the power of the words that uh, Job's friends would use, but the power of words that we use towards each other and those around us. So tonight we're shifting. It's very much, these two go hand in hand because we're talking about words last week. This week we're talking about compassion, and, and of course those, you know, you got to speak compassionate words to show the compassion, but it's also the action, you know, and part of what we talked about last week, how, how we're quick to judge. We see, like I, I used the example last week, you see somebody out there who's homeless and you automatically assume they got there because uh, maybe they made some bad choices or they were lazy or, you know, we can go and find all kinds of uh, reasons why they may be there and just assume and not know the whole story. Well, when it comes to how we treat people, you know, with our actions, you know, we don't want to just judge without knowing the whole story. And even when we do know the whole story, I don't want to tell you to go and judge, but it'll give you a better picture of how to respond. But when you don't, you know, either way, we need to respond with compassion. We need, we need to remember that we are saved by grace through faith. And, you know, no matter how holy we think we are, no matter how... You know, we show for Sunday every so show for church every Sunday. We're in God's Word every Sunday, uh, and every day do our quiet times. It doesn't make us any better. We can fall just as easy as the next person. So we need to keep those kind of things in mind and realize, man, I could be on the street next. I could have fallen into sin next. You know, and and keep that in mind that we're all in the flesh and we're fighting this battle together. And that's where the compassion comes in, where we reach out and we realize our brothers and sisters. Or even other just other humans that maybe they don't have Christ yet, but yet God created them just as He created us. That we should have compassion on them for their situation, and you know pray for them and treat them the way that we would want to be treated. To try to be that light, because we don't sometimes I think we don't stop and just realize how we treat others. Compassion or lack of compassion, we're gonna have an influence. We're gonna have some kind of effect on that person whether it's a good or bad and if we can learn to to love like Jesus if we can learn to walk in his his footprints and live the way he lived the sacrificial love that he had for others if we can learn to do that we can share compassion and show people what it is to be a true Christian to have that true love and that love of God that shines through us is what's going to give us power to change people, to change the world, to change our environments, our workplaces, our homes by the compassion that we have or the lack of compassion where we're going to push people away and we're going to cause more destruction than good. Let's go to our scripture. Job 6, 14. He says, To him that is afflicted, pity should be showed from his friend, but he forsaketh the fear of the Almighty. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we come before you humbly this, this evening, Lord, as we open up to discuss your word tonight, Lord. I just pray that you hide me behind the cross, Lord. I just pray that you give me the words to speak. Give me the message, Lord, that will draw people closer to you, Lord, that will help us to have compassion in the way that you have had compassion on us. Help us open our eyes to, to see the truth of your word, Lord, to see where it is to be a true Christian, where it is to treat others the way you'd have us to treat them, Lord. I pray you take this time, cast Satan away from the, the hearers tonight, Lord, that they can be focused on you, Lord. Lord, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. So to him that is afflicted should be showed the, the pity. And, you know, here we're, we're following up, and, you know, we haven't even got to Job's other friends. Last week we talked about Eliphaz. And he was the one who, he was the first friend, and he's the one who was speaking mostly to Job at this, up to this point. And all the things that he had to say were not encouraging things. He was, you know, accusing him of sin, accusing Job of sin, saying, you know, God would not have let these things had to you, happen to you if you had not had sin. But he didn't know the whole story. And he spoke, and, and he 
you know, did think about the words that you speak. He did more damage than doing good. And so after hearing all these things that he was taught telling Job and really accusations that he didn't know anything about, he assumed, you know, from his experiences or from what he had learned or, or thought, thought, he assumed because Job was suffering that there was sin in his life. Not always the case. However, he was not showing compassion. And if there was sin, was, sin was the reason, we still need to act with compassion. And I will go far as far as saying this, we show compassion, you know, by helping others, by encouraging, kind words, being nice. But I also want to say, compassion also, us showing that we care for somebody, sometimes it might require us to say, hey, the lifestyle that you're living, there will be a time where we've got to do that. And say, hey, the lifestyle that you're living, that sin, when we see it, when we know it, and we can show them in scripture what they're doing. But that even, you, you do that with compassion. Because if we just tell them, hey, everything's okay, and we try to just encourage them, but we don't, and we see the truth, and we see the sin that's there, and we don't tell them about that, and just kind of blow that to the side, what kind of compassion is that? Because then, they're not going to know, they're not going to hear their words, that's going to point them in the right, the right direction, to make the right choices, to move forward, and... Repent of those sins that are there. So compassion, kind words, but also compassion also means telling them the truth. So Job, as he's going through this, you know, all he's needing, his friends, the compassion. I'm sure they came to him. You know, they traveled. They came to see him. That shows some compassion right there. They sat with him in silence. That shows some compassion right there. They were with him. And just to say, hey, I'm here. But what happens when we open our mouth sometimes? And that's what happened here is they begin to open their mouth. And he began, Eliphaz began looking for reasons, you know, why, why he was going through the things that he was going through, why he was suffering the way he was suffering. Job was just wanting somebody to be there, to be an encourager, somebody that could have compassion and some understanding. You know, sometimes, you know, we want to give people the answers. You know, we want to be the wise one to come across and say, hey, this is what you're doing wrong. This is what you need to change. And we think we become Dr. Phil's or, you know, we want to come and just have all the answers. You know, sometimes, probably many times, when we want to come across that way, we want to, we want to give them the answers and we start digging and searching without the leading of the Holy Spirit, without talking to God first and Lord, give me the words. You know, sometimes we do that and we start digging and try to find answers and we start pulling stuff out that really doesn't fit because we're thinking with our minds and not being led by the Spirit. Sometimes, you know, somebody just needs somebody to just sit there and listen. Listen to what's going on. Listen to what they're going through. Sometimes just that alone, that silence of listening to the problem, listening to the situation, and not being so quick to say, hey, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong. Let's just soak it in first. Let's just listen to what they've got to say. And give, give them some, I mean, give them some dignity, letting them know that hey, I'm here to listen to you. Your words are important to me. What you're going through is important to me. Letting that person know, because that's one of the biggest things that we need sometimes is to know that we're important to somebody. That somebody's going to care enough to listen. Somebody's going to care enough to try to be the the encourager. And that's half of it right there. But what Job was going through was so deep and so hurtful to Job. Losing his wealth, losing his family, now losing his health. And he was losing hope. And when we read like verses um, 11 and 13, he says, What is my strength that I should hope? And what is my end that I should prolong my life? Is my strength the strength of stones? Or is my flesh of brass? Is not my help in me? And is wisdom driven quite? from me you know he's getting down into a pretty dark place you know when we begin to lose things whether it's you know the material things family members uh, whatever it might be losing control of life it can get pretty dark sometimes and he was at a place right there where he's getting to the point where he's losing hope and he talks about 
in, you know, within this chapter, he talks about the man who's out working, he's laboring, and he's looking forward to the sunset. That sun's going to go down, the day's going to end, he's going to get paid his wages. He's got something to look forward to. And Job is, Job is looking forward, and he's saying, at least he's got something to look forward to. What do I have to look forward to? i got to wake up another day and suffer with this pain. And knowing that I've lost my children, and knowing that I've lost my wealth, and the motivation just goes down. The hopelessness begins to sink in. Depression begins to sink in. So we don't know what people are going through sometimes. Sometimes people are going through things like that, and you don't even know what they're carrying. They have a good shield put up, a good face to put on, smile right through it. And you don't know the whole situation. And sometimes those people just need to have an encourager. And what Elephas was doing here, thinking that he was helping, thinking he was encouraging, thinking he was going to point Job in the right direction, just, you know, repent of your sins and when he didn't even know. Those words on top of everything else, think about this, the words that you speak on top of everything else that somebody is going through, somebody who's going to have, having a hard time, and you go and throw those words out there, and you have no compassion on them. You're just pointing at all the things that they've done wrong, or the things that you think they've done wrong. All you're doing in that situation is adding more weight to the burden, crushing them, causing them to go into more despair, giving, taking away any hope that might have been there. The hope people are looking for, you can deliver that hope with your compassion, with your kind words, you know, by, by just being there and saying, I'm going to be here to encourage you. And if there's things that are going on, going on that, you know, maybe I can't fix it, I can stand with, by you with this. And of course, another big thing, I've got to throw this out there, is the prayer. Letting them know, hey, I'm going to pray for you. And pray for them. Pray for them right then and there. Let me encourage you in prayer. Let me lift you up in prayer to God. The one healer. The true, almighty healer. Who can heal physical and spiritual. They can get you out of that kind of situation. To lift you up. So with those current words to Job, as they were throwing their words out there, Elephant was throwing the words out there, they were useless to him. He told him, you know, this is just dead weight. It's just something that's going to cause them more anger, more hurt, more pain because of the lack of compassion. And Job, you know, he goes through here and he's talking about, you know, he's not asking them for anything. In verse, in verse 21, For now ye are nothing, ye, are see, ye see me casting down, and are afraid. And he's talking to his friends here so that they're nothing. The words that he, they're saying, nothing. All they're doing is casting them down. And then he goes on, he says, Did I say, bring unto me, or give a reward for me, for your substance? Or deliver me from the enemy's hand, or redeem me from the hand of the of the mighty. No, he's saying, I'm not asking you for these things. I'm not asking you to come and save me, to redeem me. And he, and in verse 24, he says, this, he says, "Teach me. I will hold my tongue, and cause me to understand wherein I have erred." So, I think what Job's asking for here is he's saying, "You're telling me that I'm sinning. You're telling me I need to repent of my sins. They got me here." He said, "Show me where." Show me where I have sinned. In other words, get specific. And this is what we need to do if we're going to help somebody that is in a bad situation. And, you know, if it's evident, show them with compassion. Show them the scripture. Show them the examples. This is what, this is the life that you've done. These are the decisions that you have made. And this is what God's word says about it. And maybe God's trying to get your attention. So look at the scripture. Give him the specifics. He says, show me. Teach me. Help me to understand. And I really think that he, when he asked that, I think he really knew the answer was, you know, he was living that upright life. He was walking upright and, and doing as God had instructed him to do. And we know this 
was the fact because God says that in his word when the Satan approached him. And he said, look at my, my servant. He's upright. He's God-fearing. So Job is saying, okay, you're going to say I'm sinning? You're going to say I'm Show me. Show me the proof. Be specific. How forcible are, are right words, but what doth your arguing reproof? In other words, everything you're saying, what's your proof? They had no proof of anything. They had nothing solid other than what they thought, what they created up in their minds. So when you're going to approach somebody and you see something that's going on that might be causing them, make sure you've got the scripture. So they're specific. Search it out yourself. And first of all, even before that, go to God in prayer and ask God to give you the words. Ask Him to help you to understand the situation, to give you the words to say, to give you the actions. Because we have a responsibility to show that compassion to others, to be the light, to show the love of Jesus, to show the world what it is to be a true Christian. We've got to live it out. And we've got to start with you and me. And we have a and we do have a responsibility to lift up to, to, and to be encouragers. To show compassion. In James 126, James 126 says, If any man among you seem to be religious, you know, you get the Jesus t-shirt on. He says, And bridleth bridleth not his tongue, control those words, but deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion is vain. So it comes back to showing the compassion with our words through this scripture. Control your tongue. Control the things that you're saying. Just don't go off and saying things that you shouldn't be saying. Or telling lies. Or twisting truth. Or tearing people down with your words. And right there he says, This man's religion is vain. In other words, he's wearing that t-shirt. I've got Jesus. But when he goes out there, when we go out there, and we're not controlling the words, we're not bridling it. In other words, we don't have that rain on it to make sure that we're saying the right things, being led by the Spirit. So that that religion, that's vain. That t-shirt you're wearing, it means nothing. But the words that you do speak, when you speak them from God, when you from the heart, and you're 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 in sync with the Holy Spirit. There's going to be a difference. See, we have that responsibility. And then 1 John 3.17 says, But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? So again, that compassion, compassion that Job was seeking, we have that responsibility to show that compassion to the lost world. We have a responsibility to show that compassion to our brothers and sisters in Christ. And right there it tells us, if we don't show that compassion, if we don't share and help where we can help, what God gives us, the knowledge He gives us, the materials He gives us, whatever it is that He gives to us, and we see a brother in need, it says right there, how can we have the love of God in us? We're not living it out. So that'll be our challenge for the week, is to live out life with compassion to reach out to others, to encourage them, to lift them up. Maybe you're the one that needs to, maybe you're the one who needs to be encouraged. So you know what, it, what I'm talking about when you're there. And I tell you what, when you're one who needs to be encouraged and you feel like you're knocked down and you feel like you're drained and you see somebody else who's going through something similar or they're knocked down and you're there for that person, you show them compassion that's going to help lift you up. God blesses you for that. And he's going to, that's going to help lift you up and get you back on your feet. And as brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to do that for each other. We need to come back and encourage each other. When we see somebody fall or stumble or go through a hard time, we need to show compassion and reach out to them and show them the love of Christ. This is how the body works. If you get a cut on yourself, it begins to heal. Your body begins to work at healing that, closing that back up. And that's how the body works. And the body of Christ is the same way. Satan's out there trying to seek whoever he can to devour, to, to tear apart, to destroy. But as the body of Christ, we come together and we encourage each other. 
we show that compassion for towards each other and the world sees that they see how Christians treat each other they see how Christians treat those out there in the lost world and believe me they're watching they're looking for an excuse so let's be the Christians who stand up and show compassion even when it's not deserved even when it's not earned because remember Jesus Christ showed compassion on us when he went to that cross and he took your sins on his back he, and, your, and with that went to the cross and laid down his life for you that's the kind of compassion imagine having that kind of compassion on others that you're willing to lay down your life for them that's the kind of God that we serve and that's the way we need to live our lives let's go to the Lord in prayer Dear Lord, we come before you humbly this evening, Lord. We thank you for your son going to the cross. We thank you for the compassion, for the grace, for the mercy that you give us daily, Lord. Help us, Lord, to stop and just consider how great you are and consider how you forgive us for our sins, to consider how you come back and rescue us when we fall and how we're totally dependent on your mercy. Help us to, to think about that and to realize how much we need you. And with that, Lord, help us to also realize how others need that same compassion and how that you give us that opportunity and that responsibility to share that compassion with others, to show them that love. Lord, as we go our separate ways this week, Lord, I pray that you just work through us, Lord. Let us see the miracles that you can do through us by showing compassion by lifting others up and being encouragers, Lord. And help us to have the strength because that strength to do that and that wisdom to do that, Lord, is going to call come all from you, Lord. So I just pray you just touch your people and work through us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you and have a blessed week.